that we'll take a look at uh, the market. Um, just in case you're wondering, I <coughs> will be a bit uh, off the ball because uh, I've had a, a bit of a fever yesterday, and still today actually, so not feeling optimal. So I, I didn't do any pre-scanning. Uh, so we'll take a look together uh, if you don't mind, but uh, not feeling optimal. But still, it's only one and a half hours, so I'll survive the uh, this session, no problem. Then I'll probably dive into bed again. <laughs> Alrighty, um, let's see. Let's go through the terms and conditions here quickly, and then we'll look at the charts. Alrighty, so you should be aware of the risk disclaimer explaining that uh, global financial markets and forex trading forex is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please be aware of that and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this video and webinar is for education purposes only. All right. Thank you for your attention on that. Well, it's a live trading room with me, of course, as always, and uh, we have it three times a week. We're going to be looking at breakout strategies primarily. Here we have the consolidation zones that we're looking for, right? And don't forget to look at Admiral Markets on Twitter and Facebook. Good. Let's take a look at the calendar. First of all, I want to check if someone hears me first of all. That's quite important. So I'll just ask you if you can give me a confirmation of visual and uh, audio. Does anyone hear me? Oh, okay, great. I got one okay, so that should be okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's move on to taking a look. Yesterday we had a FMOC meeting minutes, and uh, I just quickly took a glance before we opened, and I saw the euro really flew up. There was that risk, right, that uh, that could happen. And uh, finally the dollar strength kind of took a blow and I guess you know those moments when you when a downtrend is on the euro dollar is so long in place was a, was a good move and it just kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing there's always that possibility that uh, a news event like that will be used to uh, make the impulse to the other side that's what happened it doesn't surprise me um, it's not something I want to trade personally because it's just a type of movement I'm not really out to catch if you, if you know what I mean we, we had odd uh, employment change. <clears throat> Let's see what happened with the odd. It probably had a positive effect because it um, had a good employment change here, although the unemployment rate decreased a bit. And otherwise, we have we have a ECB monthly report, but that's an hour. I don't know. It's a medium impact. I, I don't think that indeed that is that serious. So here's that uh, euro dollar, and wow. What a rocker. Um, if we really zoom into the last part of the fall, you can see that the currency was stopping at almost all these fibs, the 50, the 618, the 786, and then just bang, flew up at 8 o'clock at FMOC time. And what a, I mean, that's tremendous, wow. 250 pips. For me, it's still new because I had to look at the charts. As I said, I totally, uh, totally, I didn't feel well already in the afternoon. I get shivers. It's strange. I feel a bit better now because I slept longer. So, um, so that's a tremendous impulse. Wow! Look at that day candle. I mean, that's just, <laughs> wow. Four hundred twenty pips, crazy. That's what you get when you get. You know, you have to always be careful when they get to bigger supports like this. In a way, it's you know, <clears throat> one way of trading something like this is if you're if you're cheeky enough to, uh, you know, one twenty seven forty. We already said was a very big support right here. 
we had and this 127 8 and 128 level you know if you're tricky enough to to be able to buy it but this requires a lot of experience really a lot of experience but uh, it's not a trade that I typically aim for to, to catch but sometimes it does have merit if you the, at the end of the impulse uh, this was Tuesday afternoon New York uh, session and when it kind of like makes a hook back here because after uh, after this impulse is over it's not the chances that it continues is so low you you know there's a high chance of at least a correction and then there's either the chance of, of one more fall like we've had on the euro dollar for you know ever since uh, the beginning of that downtrend or sometimes if you're lucky enough you get this but you have to be really you know you have to really know the time factor because the impulse is going to stop and won't continue but you you know there's a high chance that if you would have done that the previous two times you just get another down move against you basically but you can move it to plus one but that's you know if once you know time factor that could help you with establish you know establishing when you can take a counter trend trade in fact very important mostly I don't think many traders really look at time factor they just but if you know that then you know that the impulse set part of the the, the the part of the day that the impulse is happening is over it's just gonna hook back or or go sideways and you can still take it off if it will go sideways but that's you really need to to, to you know that's time factor is very tricky um, let's see so how does that fit in that big move up because let's see I would have to, I wanted to take a look at the bigger picture if you don't mind because I want to see what that up move means I mean it's clearly it has to be some I mean that has to have a follow-through I can't imagine having a 450 pip up day not have a follow-through the question is only when and where I mean that would be really wacky if that that huge impulse gets totally erased by a down move. I mean it's you never know. It went exactly to the 618 fib of this down move. It would be pretty wacky though. But it's possible. It could be, you know, this could be, for example, uh, a wave one. This is a wave two, right? And then this is wave one, two, and then we go for three, and then it would really get very impulsive. The dollar really would get very strong, if that would be the case. But the key level would be really this bottom now at 127. That's still far away from now, I know. But if it really gets impulsive, that bottom is would be broken like a twig. If it is a wave three of a wave three. Because those are really the most powerful. It would be very interesting. very interesting in that case if that were to happen then this is basically the correction of the bigger weekly move this could be wave E and this is downside already but that would really be only confirmed 12750 this is it's really tricky because it's still stuck as it is now it's still stuck in a wedge really and only that confirmation is here so you, the only thing we can do is try to take good buys yeah that's true Adrian it is very impulsive I agree oh, yeah that's true well the thing what could happen yeah if it let's let's go with, let's continue with that theory indeed because it's I think that let's let me just finish this downside scenario basically then what we could see if this is wave A, we could see wave B, and one will move up to the 786, which would be wave C and then downside. That's possible. Then we would have divergence between those um, tops. So a buy here is good anyhow. It doesn't really matter if we really rock and roll all the way to the upside, indeed, or if we just go to the 786 and then down. That is true. You're right. I, I agree with you. I think that it would be very, 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 very wacky if that would be totally erased. Indeed, 
too impulsive, you're right. So a downside um, would be if we trace for at least one more upside, and then we could still see uh, resistance at 786 if, if the dollar strength would really, really have that wave three of three scenario, <clears throat> which is definitely possible. It, it, it is totally fits the, the theory. But let's take a look at the alternative that actually it's the other way around, because that's at the moment still possible. That would be this is a first move up. And this would be a correction. Let's see. This is a first correction. Hmm. It's kind of funky. Let's let me let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. This is one move corrective up. This could be one move on its own. This could be the first part of the up move. This is a correction. And then we get another three wave up. And that would become one three wave like this. All right, so that would be like a, we would be, in this case, it would be the first up move of the third correction of the third correction. Let me show you. First correction, down move, third correction, and within that third correction, we have one correction, two correction, three correction, and within that third, the blue three, we would have pink one, two, three. So we're in one of three of three, as you see. We're pink one, blue three, green three, if that would be upside. Which I always had in the back of my mind. I was more, so far, I've always been thinking that uh, a bigger correction will happen. So this, th that this scenario will play out. This was my main, my main thought. Um, if that would be true, I don't know. I'm open to both sides, basically. I mean, I would just follow price. This is my, my own bias, and ever has been, even when red 2 was happening, and everyone was, you know, the downtrend, even where this, uh, uh, where the blue 1 had here, this, this pink 2 of blue 1 here, was going down. I was also, remained very skeptical about that downside, to be honest. Um, this blue two, that part, then it started to look more downside, but we still had those key support levels, didn't we? It didn't break that those supports. Very crucial. Very interesting. But the problem is that the red two and the blue two, they're, these bottoms are equal to each other. Let me, let me take a look. Um, I'm thinking what kind of formation that could be because that would have to be a flat, which means that, hmm, not sure. I have to think about it. I have to, I have to revisit the, my Elliott wave knowledge because can't think of it now. Okay, maybe it's the maybe it's the fever. Anyhow, it looks like whatever scenario we have, that this pink two of blue three, where I have the circle now, the second circle, a circle with uh, two rings. That would be a good trade, probably indeed. The big formation is a zigzag. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was more thinking about uh, what one, two, three, the blue one, two, three, yes, that would be a, a flat regular. Yeah. Indeed, but that <clears throat> then that would be kind of funky for me. The reason why I doubt it is to say that because then that would imply that they wouldn't break this bot top here. Wait, let me 
where the arrow is there. Because that would be a flat, that would be a strange wave C. I don't know if that's possible. That's what I, that's what I meant. I have to check that. If a flat regular indeed with tops and bottoms equal to each other could fit within a zigzag wave C formation. I, poof. I would have to. Do you know by any chance? You don't think so? Okay. Yeah, I also had. It seemed funky to me. That's why I really had to. Hmm. So, what could it be then? Uh, that's. Can't be a zig. That one, two is, is. Can't be a zigzag. It's the, the two, the blue two is too deep, isn't it? Hmm. That's. Um, a good theoretical question, yeah. So that whole red, that blue 2 is basically, if it would have stopped at least at a 786 of that up move or something like that, or a 618 preferably, it would have totally fit in the picture, wouldn't it? Now it just crashed so much that it's difficult. Hmm. Well, let's see. I'll have to look into it. So, yeah, it is definitely tricky because uh, it's just stuck in so much sideways move. That's true, Adrian. Look at this here and like this. It's just the thing is that the whole entire structure is a correction. That's that's the trick of it. And it's taking very long. If you look at the month chart, it's taking since, um, well, actually, this down move is already part of the correction, right? So it's summer 2008. It's five years already. This up move was a trend. We then zoom into the week chart, and you can see that there are good trends within this correction, but the entire part is just a correction and of late it's just really gone very 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 choppy so bouncing between 126.50 basically and what well, it reached here 137 but that was more an exception uh, if you discard those two weeks the more like resistance point is like 134 ish really if you discard those few weeks of trading so it's a quite a narrow band indeed Sorry about that. So we can put maybe a fib. Let me take this fib off. We could maybe put a fib on this upside. That will give us some information. Uh, it's going to be very tricky. It's a... Uh, Not an easy scenario to play here because it's just such a massive up move. It could be bouncing up and down forever within this range. Minus 272 target is equal to that 886. So any of these fibs could be resistance, really. Uh, support, sorry. But of course, logically speaking, using this bottom as a stop loss would really be very difficult because of the size. It's crazy. So we really have to be some price action bounce on maybe the one hour chart would be the safest. Let's take a look at the one hour chart.
just looking at um, sorry just looking at how does up move really happen impulse sideways and then it just look at that up move even this up move if you look at it look at the time factor here here it's this this after when this first up move happened we had one two three four five bars that couldn't break this high let me show you that with the arrows right here the fifth bar couldn't break this high and we had a bigger consolidation right many bars I mean if you would count that in candles it would be like 5 10 15 20 25 ish right long then, then logically after that correction there the, the currency is ready for potential next move and you have every five almost every candle here breaking the high you see that crazy even here time factor works and then one two three four five that's it huh let's take a look at this one Interesting, isn't it? Where is it? This one. So you can see once we pop back to maybe these levels where the moving averages are, that they can be support. Yeah, the thing I wanted to show you about that first up move on the five minute chart is that the currency retraced back to the zero line here. You see that? Interesting. Classical, isn't it? All right, let's move on. Pound probably had the same, didn't it? Yep. Same scenario. Wow. So yeah, that, that was really funky that it, it broke this bottom though. That was quite mean. <laughs> uh, a lot of people got sucked in there and I, I'm sure that's very fortunate. I no idea how I would explain it with the other way theory here either because it's probably a method, I just can't think of it. It's because till now I was expecting also here in the pound, this is a correction this is a correction and then we get one more correction like this I was thinking it could happen it could it could but it could also be downside from here right after this well still it could it could be downside this could be wave one this is a wave two and we still go down on the pound that that seems a bit more likely than the euro at the moment somehow which would affect the euro pound how did the euro pound move oh moved up a lot wow that's unfortunate I just got I had my stop loss here that's a pity So that your pound is now indeed hitting that top. Remember yesterday I said I don't trust this this reversal wick could easily just continue. It's not really a price action signal that I think is valuable. I said it yesterday. It could easily just make a bullish day and, and, and indeed it doesn't surprise me. It's the position where the candle happened. That's why. The psychology of the candle here was different because it broke actually a top, these, this range. So that, that just sent it lower. It doesn't mean that it was a, you know, it could have been a bet, but I, I didn't trust it. Let me say it this way. How's the Aussie doing? So the Aussie broke indeed above 92.50, which was last week's high, and broke, is, yeah, broke above this trend line a bit. Well, that definitely changes stuff.
looking more like an uptrend now, slowly but surely. Very interesting. So it really looks more and more really like we'll have some dollar weakness to come. Uh, let's see. The moving averages are, let's see, this one is 144, 34, and 12. EMA, okay. Crazy stuff. Really, let's say the Swissy. Also downside, yeah, and downside, yeah. Wow. It was about to happen, I guess. It was time to happen, eventually. It was a big up move here on this dollar yen. And you can see that that support line was very neat. Uh, we broke yesterday. Got a bit of a bounce, as I was saying yesterday. There could be a bounce, or did I say that here? I'm not sure. There was someone else. And uh, I th no, I think I told my friends, my trading buddy. Uh, but anyhow, I told him that could be a bounce here and an easily run into resistance. Not much of a bounce, though, to be honest. So they're all the same stories. I mean, I don't know how big the dollar yen is here in, in, in its take candle, 101. Also, 300 pips, not bad. <laughs> I think they all have 300 pip move, but probably. Dollar, dollar Swiss, 300 indeed. Just went crazy, didn't it? Dollar Cad broke to the downside. They're all the same. Big uh, dollar weakness. They have different set. I mean, they have different scenarios. Of course, <clears throat> some are they're not identical because all these crosses are moving as well. So one would have a bit more strength. The euro had more strength than the yen, um, for example. So maybe the euro yen was moving to the upside. For example, let me take a look. Yeah, the euro yen moved up. You see. So the euro had you know those crosses were moved. They're not all the same. There's some differences there, but. More or less dollar weakness, basically, and all have such a massive move up and are correcting. And the chances of one more move up, uh, or one more, sorry, one more dollar weakness, I should say, is very high. And then it depends how far does that third move down go. Basically, the dollar, let's take a look at the dollar next. It's easier, actually. Because basically what happened here is we had a, uh, an uptrend for a while. After the downtrend, which is that V form, right? That valley we've seen on multiple charts. For example, the dollar yen. And this impulse indeed could just be one wave, a retraction, a correction, and then one more. Now it depends on how far this will go, this this third move down on the dollar, dollar weakness. And um, because even if it finds resistance here and it moves down here, we'll find support again here. And we can again bounce at that level. So it could stay stuck within these blue lines for longer, basically. If we zoom out to the weak chart, you'll see what those blue lines are. This, this, these tops connected, basically, and these bottoms. All right, so we're still stuck in that wedge on the dollar. We had that uptrend, down move, up move, now we can go back to the bottom here again. But the space is getting smaller. You can clearly see that smaller. So either we break out one way or another, or we stay in a sideways range because we also have tops and bottoms on this dollar index, something like this is the top, and also a bottom here, right? Then we take off the fib. Those orange lines indicating basically a potential sideways range as well. If you look at that, the currency has, the dollar has stayed within that sideways range since uh, end of 2011. So yes, there is a, a wedge and a, just a huge sideways move. Very messy. Maybe we could take a look at some crosses because really, the, if you look at it like this, 
the dollar, any dollar pair is going to be very difficult to trade today. It's uh, the only thing I can think of for those of you who are maybe arriving, uh, arrived a bit later. Um, the only thing I can think of really is a one hour support, like a one hour price action signal that signals support. Some rejection, for example, maybe off the 50 or 30 to 50. That's the only thing. It remains very risky, in my opinion, but if you get a good reversal candlestick pattern on a one hour chart, that could be an indication that we make the upside to the target. Doesn't have to be. We could we could keep correcting. Let me go to the chart with the AO. Oh, I'll go to this one. Okay. What could happen is that the currency could keep correcting until basically this gets to the zero line. All right. So once this gets to the zero line, and we get a good rejection uh, candle here, then there's a bit more likelihood that that will be indeed the signal that we're going up. If it happens before that, then we could get that rejection or support candle. We can move up like this. You see what I mean? So I suggest, if okay, wow, move on to passive. Look at that. If there's maybe something interesting, we could be correcting for a while probably, and. Um, Really not interested in trading that myself to trade that correction. Not after such a huge impulse, logically, right? So if you're okay with that, I would say let's take a look at uh, anything that is any currency that doesn't have a dollar in it, <laughs> basically. All right. But if you uh, give me just uh, 30 seconds, I uh, my tea is um, just uh, outside of my uh, reach, and I want to grab that quickly. I, I need to drink some tea because I have fever. So one second. Okay, I'm back, folks. You will hear some uh, drinking once in a while because I have to drink regularly. Um, let's move on. So let's take a look at the first non non USD pair, which is Euro pound. We already looked at it, but still, it it too is really at a talking spot. It if you look at it, it's right at the monthly trend line here or weekly trend line. So that's very interesting. After that, we have 88 as a top. If it breaks 88, ooh, 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 that could be a huge move up. And it's showing it's it was showing first signs that it could do that. But it's just a first sign because the problem is until we break that trend line here, this could still turn out to be a correction like this. Or even more downside. All right? So always uh, be careful with assuming that a trend line will break. I mean, my my analysis says it will, but um, it doesn't make sense to trade it right at the trend line here. If anything, uh, you know, I I don't take these long position trades. But anything a long position trade could have been taken here or here, but I don't typically hold those the uh, hold a currency that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, I don't do that. Um, so we're right at a. Uh, a bounce or break spot. We could bounce and still break, of course. Definitely looking pretty bullish this uh, day candle on the euro pound. Hmm. Here too, though, because it's such a pretty big move, I guess the only way that would be a one-hour chart, we could. It's it's tricky because we're already at a resistance line. There's still maybe some space to it. If I would correct it a bit more, like this, or 
it's like this, so it's a bit tricky. Trend lines are more like uh, areas, not precise lines. I mean, you could have different lines here. Both could be valid in a way, so that's a bit tricky. If we put both on, you can see that we're approaching the kind of zone of resistance. So now that's not something I necessarily want to short because on a four-hour chart we're in uptrend. And my, my main chart for uh, trends is four-hour. I'm not trading weekly trend lines. But I do want to be aware of them because then I, might be, I want to be more careful with the four-hour uh, chart. So I think that this is still um, in the fridge for me just because we hit that potential resistance line. We could find a bounce in here when we move down. But it's a bit tricky with that trend line. Let's move on. Euro yen is too, I mean, it's just in such a consolidation. Bouncing up and down, it's, it's really difficult to grasp, in my opinion, because it's just, there's so many consolidation types and patterns here that it's very unclear for me. Unless I move to the day chart, then it becomes clearer. Four-hour chart is very confusing, in my opinion. Day chart is a lot better. Day chart is clear. You have up move. with some corrections there, bigger correction, impulse, triangle here, slower move up, which led to this fall, and then three wave bounce, and so far, very slow correction here. All right, so clearly uh, that, that first green line where I have a, um, a one, that was, of course, the, the major uptrend. Ever since that, we've had, yeah, basically a slow, shallow angle of a trend to the upside. And we're right at the bottom of that trend line in a way. So it could be a bouncing spot or a breaking spot. Uh, at the moment, I would say we have to assume a bouncing spot because we're still in an uptrend channel. And we did break. If you then zoom in to this recent price action here, we did break this this correction, we did break out of that here, didn't we? So if we would break above 130, 130, which is this high here and here, which could be the head and shoulders pattern, if we break above it, that would be a signal we're going up. Otherwise it could be still an inverse, I mean a head and shoulders, but the neckline is this lower black trend line basically. So we're stuck in no man's land. Very simple. We need to break 130, 130 or that trend line and eventually, yeah, or that trend line basically. 125 would still be a big support level though. Be aware of that, but otherwise. So the day chart is a lot, helps me a lot more because the four-hour world is, is too, really too choppy. Because, why? Because basically in the four-hour world, you see this blue box, and that's just very, uh, if, very difficult to read because it moves up and down so much. Let me zoom in a, a bit now, like this, so you can see it maybe better. So that, of course, here we had that impulse, right? This is just a slow move up. Let me get rid of some of these resistance lines. I don't need all of them now because we broke out of it anyhow. This blue line is the kind of indicates the resistance here as well. Right? We broke out of that, broke out, hooked back, and we're making kind of a, a downtrend or a bull flag. So if we break out of that top blue line, which is here, we have a small trade maybe to the upside, to the orange line. If we break then, then we really have upside. Let's zoom in now to the 4-hour chart with that knowledge.
and you can see that a lot of ups and downs within this uh, within this uh, these blue this blue channel to the downside. I mean, it's moving 250 pips up and down. It's amazing. Um, if it were to make maybe a move back to, let's say, this level, we'll be close to that uptrend channel again. Or uptrend support line. We would maybe make an inverse head and shoulders here. So maybe something like that, and then a bounce there could be interesting, right in here. Otherwise, right now, it's kind of, to me, it's stuck in the middle of a channel, and that's not that interesting, especially in, in the current situation. I mean, it's just, we already know that we broke out here, right? We have the blue circle, and we've, we're making a slow but surely uh, sure downside. So to, to trade anything here, uh, it's not that interesting. Either maybe maybe from the top here, speculating on a bounce to the downside, or speculating from a bounce to the upside here. That's the only thing that could be interesting at the moment. Within this wedge, within this bigger wedge, because DJ is very wedgy. <laughs> but uh, let's see. So nothing there. Sorry about that, I had to really wrap my head around it because it was really, it looked very funky. Um, pound, yen. Kind of the same story to be honest. Yeah, there's not much difference. I mean, the only difference is that the pound yen is, the down move has been more f stronger, the downside pressure. That's all. So there's a bit of, the, the currency is set a bit different. The fall was higher, the, uh, more pips. Pound is a bit, because that's because the euro pound has been still going in a sideways move, but if there's any direction, it's still a bit more up, I think. Let's see, the pound, let me take a look at the euro yen, this difference is 800, and here it's 800. Ah, that's funny, not really actually, it's, it's about the same, it's maybe only a 100 pip difference, that's not that much actually. Okay, that, well that makes sense, maybe, but looks somehow more uh, bearish to me, how it's set up. Maybe maybe it's just how I have the uh, chart uh, zoomed in here. Um, also, the difference is I thought that we broke out of that downtrend line here. Let me make that red, this red down, downtrend line on the EJ. We broke out of that. We didn't do that with the, the pound yen, so there's a bit of a difference, I think, this red line. Hi, Kaylin. No problem at all. You're not missing much. We uh, have a fever, so uh, I'm not in a big of a trading mood. Uh, but um, we're just analyzing the charts, and we, we came to the conclusion that uh, the dollar is difficult to trade, not at the moment because of that huge weakness. And uh, the only thing we can wait for is either a uh, one more weakness move, but that will take probably some time probably be correcting for a while the dollar to the upside and then one more fall as a continuation of that dollar weakness. And one way of measuring if, that's, if that fall is ready, if you use the one hour AO and if it's back to the zero line then and you see any price action signal on the one hour chart like a good wick or reversal candle, that could be the, the you know, deep turning point for the dollar to continue its weakness one more time at least. Like the euro dollar went um, to the upside, of course, so the euro dollar is now corrected to the downside. If uh, if this um, euro dollar then hits the zero line here, the AO, 
and we get a good uh, rejection wick or, or engulfing twins or any kind of good price action signal that could be a good cheek you know good still a good long uh, although the whole impulse makes me a bit um, yeah how do I say it? like difficult to trade let me say it this way but definitely if we get a a support like good support bullish candlestick pattern reversal signs here and the arrows for example back to the zero line that could be a good one Alrighty, let's move on. That's just wanted to show Kaden that we can. No, we haven't looked at euro. So that's the difference between euro pound and euro yen and pound yen. The euro yen, therefore, a bit more interesting for me. But the pound yen is right at this big daily support line. Do you see that? So that's going to be interesting. So the red and blue lines are crucial, I think. Plus, we have to look at the tops and bottoms always, of course. All right. Yep, that's about it. It is at a bouncing spot here, maybe. So let's see. That's that's the pound yen. Let's move on to EuroCAD. Your cat is uh, is tricky. Let's see. It was definitely an uptrend. Made a correction. Bounce off the 50 fib. But move down a lot as well, which means that it could be a retracement here on the EuroCAD. Look at that. Went right back to resistance and it's moving down already. A lot. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. I mean, there's huge engulfing daily candles, but then again, um, the day chart is in a downtrend, so it is tricky. Um, the weekly chart is an uptrend, of course. The weekly chart is definitely an uptrend. That's why we probably bounce off that 50 fib right in here. But if you look at the day and four-hour chart, we're definitely making lower lows and lower highs. Really tricky. Nothing that I, I see I want to trade right now. Let's move on. Pound Swiss is right back at this, this bottom here and bouncing up again. Could be a range trade maybe, but it's already moved away from that bottom. Difficult to trade. Uh, Euro odd. Wow, that really got a good bounce there. Wow, it moved up a lot. That's like 60, 260. Huh. All right. Um, let's see. A bit tricky. We, uh, we broke this black trend line here. But we didn't break this support line at 138, right? So we're kind of making a sideways correction now. We broke the trend line, that black trend line I have there. The problem is we didn't break the, the bottom, the key bottom at 138. So in that regard, it could just be a, a sideways correction at the moment. And looking at these engulfing twins, Could mean that we're going to bounce here actually to maybe uh, this upside here to this trend line. Like that. I'll take this off. We broke that.
It too is quite funky uh, at the moment. It doesn't have any direction uh, because if you look at the four-hour chart, we zoom into the last piece. It's just it's just going until here. We had a trend right in here, and after this correction, this correction, this correction. Is that was that the end of the correction, and we're getting into the upside, or are we going to expand that? Like this, and make a bigger correction like that. So it could be could become a range now. It's possible. It's possible, which makes it very difficult to uh, to trade. Uh, looking at the position now, it could be something like this. Back to the blue line. That's possible. So maybe if this is back to the zero line, let me put a fib on this upside. There's a sideways zone here at the 55th. That could be the bouncing spot for that move. It's not the most exciting trade, I think, personally. I mean, it's not the the. It's it's a it's it's a decent trade, I think. It definitely because of this impulse, one more move up is likely, I think. Alrighty, just gonna take some tea. Um, as you know, I have to uh, take a lot of drinks here, otherwise uh, I have to help uh, the fever. Alrighty, so that could be interesting. Let's take a look at the fifty-minute world. <clears throat> Let me add one moving average. We change this one to 34. Let's see. Yeah, we definitely have a bouncing spot. Let's see, the 50, I would say, or or if we start making higher highs and higher lows on this 50-minute chart, that could be the, the spot that we make upside. So let's keep an eye on this. Um, the 50 fib is, is, is always you know, the risk that uh, it doesn't bounce there and it just continues lower. That's the problem with the fib. And it goes to the next fib. <clears throat> you know, If you wait for maybe a 50-minute fractal to be broken, then you have more confirmation that it's actually moving up. That's the advantage of a breakout, right? So I'll probably opt for that at the moment. Looking at looking at how funky and wacky the market is today, with that huge FMOC statement, um, I think a breakout is probably safer than catching it on a fib. So let's see if we get a 50-minute fractal here, uh, if it if it makes sense. Because otherwise, fibs can be very risky, especially today. All right. So let's take a look at your New Zealand, or let's take a look at your dollar. Kayla has just a quick question, so just bear with me there. Uh, let's take a look. So it's a, a euro dollar trade, okay, and it's at one thirty one. And. Tar he says he's looking for a target of 29.50. 131. Okay, interesting.
Um, let's see. Well, the, what you could do is put a fig on this move. We're right at the target now. So that could be a small bouncing spot here. Or the 618, which would be the next target. And you can put a fig on the upside. And that 618 target corresponds to the 50 fib and the three, minus 27 at the 382. This happens often. There's often that harmony in the market. It's quite funny how that works. It's really amazing sometimes. Uh, most of these times the targets really fall right on the retracements. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, so this could be a small bouncing spot. Uh, then it depends if we get one more follow through to the 50 and 618 target. I would say the 50 fib is where I would want to, you know, would be very careful. Uh, 129.50 is below that, and it's somewhere between the 50 and 618 fib. So I think a more, if, if you want to aim for something deeper, I think 129.85 seems more, less risky, more, more likely. You can see I said it could be a small bouncing spot here. But it could definitely move, make one more move, you know. It could go up to a f this fib, for example. Or maybe the entire fib, even, and go back to a 50 fib here at 131.10, and then move down to the 138 area. And then if you put a fib on that down move, you can see there's a minus 272 target and a minus 618 target right at the 50 fib. It doesn't have to go that, uh, it depends. Let's see how far it goes. I think that any up move here will still find rejection because this down move is pretty, is one piece basically of 750 pips here. No, 150 pips. So eventually, you know, just because we made a pretty big move here already, you know, it's going to find some bounce and then probably see one more down move, and then it depends. Do we see another up move, or do we see this fall like that? So my target would be, if anything, above around 129.85. Okay, Caleb? Alrighty. I mean, you could also aim for maybe lower, but you know the chances you get there are really lower and lower. You know, 129.30, 618 target, and minus one target, 618 retracement, one minus one target. We could even we could get there, but the chances are just getting uh, lower, especially after the impulse like that. I think 50, a 50 fib is already uh, really the max you can expect because 382 could be already could be already could be the bouncing spot. It's possible because it's such a small, strong up move that the 382 could be the area where we bounce to the upside. That's the problem. Either the 382 or 50, or even the 236, but we broke through that already. So, Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to something else. Your New Zealand is different than your odd. It's already in a downtrend. All right. Let me just look at two questions I have here. 
All right, give me one second. Good morning, Bogdan. Sure thing, uh, Bogdan, no problem at all. If you have questions, just let me know, okay? And uh, Kaylin has a question. Uh, 126. If 126 is possible. Uh, Bogdan, yeah, that's, that's a good question, Bogdan. We were looking at that this earlier, looking at your dollar for quite a while to see you know, what could be the scenarios. Um, if it breaks 126.60, I think that not only will we reach 126, but we'll probably fall a lot. If we break 127.40, actually. Uh, but especially, yeah, 126.60, 127.40. If we break that zone, I think that we have a lot of downside. Uh, if we're reached there, I don't know. That's difficult to say because we had a pretty big up impulse now. So we could easily make one more upside back to 133. Then it depends. How, how far we go? Do we break this, this upper trend line? Would we respect it and then fall? Uh, if we stay below 134.10, this, this high, it could still be massive downside. If we break above 134.10, then the likelihood of a bigger correction to the upside is bigger. So we're stuck in that zone here, and we could be bouncing in between that, what we've done for a long time, right? Look at this, all the price action in there. So what could happen is either we, we make something like this and keep breaking to the upside, or we, we make one more upside here, don't break this top, this could still be a wave one, two, wave one, two, and then fall a lot. So that'll be interesting. In any case, what is, seems to be very high probability is that this is a bouncing area, and this is a resistance area. And how much the currency moves to which side or another is, is difficult to say. But these two things are at the moment likely. So that's that's my view. Um, let's see, you're in New Zealand downtrend, right? Let's go back to you, you're in New Zealand. Downward channel. Back to resistance here. AO back to the zero line after a dip down. Let's see the 50 minute chart. Hmm. Well, kind of broke out of this this correct this upside, haven't we? Like this, and we're back at the uh, at the resistance spot on a higher time frame. We're breaking out of this up upward movement here. I know it's a pretty steep line in the one hour chart. It's risky, but this could be uh, more downside. It could be a fall like this, maybe. It's opposite of the euro odd, which makes it a bit funny. Um, so I have to be conscious of that. The euro odd looks more up. You know, there are different currencies, so it can happen. The euro odd, remember, it looks more like impulse, correction, impulse. Uh, this one has an impulse, but if you look at the bigger thing, bigger scheme of things, then you see that this is an impulse. Uh, more in a down move here, so makes it a bit tricky. 
maybe if we break this level here, it would be an indication that we're going to correct lower. Alrighty, let's take a look at the pound odd. Pound odd is even funkier actually because it broke the top here at the right where we have the green red circle and the bottom. Pound New Zealand, that's at a massive downtrend already. Yeah, that's that's definitely a downtrend. Um, let's see. Price is now moving up, though, back to the moving averages. You can see that it bounced off the moving average, and then broke through it, and now it's hooking back to it. So now it's becoming resistance instead of support. I don't know, not not really that much of interest to me. The Euro out or Europe. Maybe if we break this this trend line here, it could be that continuation of downside. Alright, we're kind of in a triangle here, we're breaking that triangle maybe to the upside, although it could easily find resistance again. So I would say because we're in a downtrend, only a break of this blue line could be interesting. That's the only thing really I think. Otherwise upside is I just found this is not interesting because it's different than the euro odd. It's, it's definitely a downtrend. Um, what else do we have left? Not much, I see. Aussie Swiss. Let me get rid of these lines. We're bouncing to the upside here, finally, after weeks of downside. But we had a pretty bearish day yesterday. That's funny. So the Swiss showing more strength than the Aussie yesterday. Slowly but surely moving to the upside. So we have an uptrend, more or less, technically speaking. I mean, we have higher highs and higher lows on the day chart and four hour chart. And the week chart, of course, we're in a downtrend, but this has moved so much that Basically, could uh, retrace back to the 50 fib, and there would be a lot of pips there. So that's not too important. The only thing is that the up move has moved very slow. It's going very slow here. Let's see which fib it bounced off. It bounced off a 786 fib. At 85.72. Now we bounce off the 50 fib of this entire three wave up. So that could be maybe a support area. Let's take a look. It's a one hour chart. That could be a bouncing area right in here. We already broke this fractal. If we break above this fractal, that could be uh, a move up. At least maybe up to here somewhere, we could put a fib to the downside, see what the target could be. Maybe the 618 target, for example. 8871. Now it's 8790. That's 80 pips. And the low here is 8740. That's 50 pips. Not bad. One and a half to one. 
depends. It could also be, uh, let's see, it could be a bigger bouncing spot. So maybe not the 618, but maybe we'll go even further to, uh, to this 272 target. That would increase the RDOR a lot, of course, because that would be, this would be then the reward, and, and this would be the risk. That would be a lot better. Spread is pretty low. It's only two pips on this odd Swiss. That's great. Let's take a look at the 50 minute world. Making higher highs and higher lows here. Slowly but surely. One hour chart two. Kind of broke out of this 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 trend line, although it's quite steep. But sometimes those indicate that this is the end of the impulse when we break out of a trend line like that. The question is, will we move slow like this? If we do that, then it's good to take off the trade. Or if we move some, you know, more impulsively like this, then it's good to stay in. That's the danger of, of trading trend line breaks that are uh, steep or, or kind of boxing in an impulse. It's a bit more dangerous than a trend line that is uh, above a correction because then the likelihood of another impulse is higher. All right, so for example, like this, if you have uh, an impulse and then a slow correction like this, and you put a trend line on top of that, then the chance of a next impulse is pretty high. If you have a impulse and you put a trend line on that, you you know there's more likelihood of either a slow correction like this, or sometimes you do get this, all right? But it's not as secure as this, number one, the first scenario. I'll put a one there, and this is scenario number two. So that depends. It, it's probably the most interesting I see at the moment. Maybe with the Euro odd and Euro New Zealand, let me take a look. Euro odd is making a 50 minute fractal here. That's good because then we do not have an idea. If we break that fractal, then we're probably moving up. Let's take a look at the Euro New Zealand. Here I'm looking for the opposite. If we break the lower one, then we have a good idea we're moving down. Odd Swiss, it could be maybe the same like this, although. This is a more riskier stop loss. Stop loss here is better because of the one hour fractal. So maybe the one hour world is better. Let's see how this hour starts because we have potential fractal. If this hour doesn't break it, we have a potential fractal here. That would be, you know, another way of doing it to wait for a break of this fractal, even more confirmation. So let's keep an eye on this, how this odd Swiss develops. Okay. In the meantime, um, Bogdan is asking me what the reason is for what happened. Well, it's clearly a news event triggered response. Uh, I haven't had the chance to read any news about it because um, yesterday I was just trying to recover from trying to fight the fever. And this morning, and after that, that's why I was just slept very long this morning.
So I didn't check any news yet. I don't know what happened. Does anyone know what happened? What, what was said? Probably uh, tapering is, uh, has been postponed for, for a while, I guess, because we got huge dollar weakness. So probably some uh, more accommod accommodative words and ideas. Does anyone know? I didn't check it. I have no idea. But it, it's definitely triggered by the FMOC, that's for sure. I mean, but I'm, I'm sure you're aware of that, right, Bogdan? I'm probably wondering what the news event, what the news was, right? Let me know, okay, Bogdan, what uh, what you what you meant with that question. But don't know exactly. We can take a look if you want. We can take a look at, quickly at CNBC if, as we keep an eye on this odd Swiss. And you're odd, and you're in New Zealand. Uh, Graham has a uh, has the answer. He, Graham says that Bernanke confirmed rates to stay low, hence the move. Okay. But I thought the rates were already fixed low for 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 very long. That's funny. I wouldn't expect such a huge move on base in that. I thought definitely would have something said about tapering or something like that. That that doesn't that that's not going to happen for a while. Let's see. Uh, try to find anything connected to it. Not easy. There's all kind of news, but except that. Ah, here. Global markets sigh in relief on Bernanke comments. Fed easing of stimulus could hamper European recovery. Let's see. Okay, indeed, yeah. Basically, Bernanke said that they need a high, highly accommodative monetary policy. Wow, let's take a look at gold actually. I see that gold jumped to, let's take a look. Ah, uh, that's nothing that, ah, uh, it's nothing that spectacular. It seemed like they, okay, it was a $40 move, but technically that was within reason. I didn't expect, uh, I mean, that's what I expected that it wouldn't break the 50 or 618, right? We're right at the 50, actually. So there's nothing spectacular about that. It's just a correction back to the 55th. Seems like the uh, gold really moves a lot in this article, but it's not that bad. It's uh, within this uh, logical movement. We could see probably maybe the 618 now, maybe. 50 is a big spot, you know, a big spot as well. Maybe next week we could see something like this and then a fall.
Alrighty, that's that. Uh, let's go back to the euro odd here. Your odd is breaking above this fractal. That could mean that we are moving up. So the euro New Zealand is probably moving up as well, indeed. So the euro is showing some strength. So the euro New Zealand downside is probably not going to happen. Odd Swiss is a bit moving still down. So let's see if we if we get the bounce here. So the euro odd could be breaking this correction here, like this. Now that we broke this uh, this high, it's about a thirty pip stop loss here, and target would be I would think probably any of these fibs. Let me take a look at the one-hour chart. Well, you could even go any, if you want to be conservative, you could go for this fit, but if you want to be more aggressive, you can even go for this target. That would give a better R2R. But if you go for this target, the only thing is that the stop loss would be a lot safer for, for here. So that's the only thing. Let me take a look at the euro dollar quickly, see how that euro uh, closed this last hour. Euro is still moving to the downside. Okay, that's good for uh, for Kaylin, I think, right? It was in the euro dollar short. The one hour chart showing a bearish candle. Look at that. Still showing downside. Alrighty, so this is the uh, dollars, euro dollar, still not showing any reversal signs at the moment. Let me take a look at the pound. No signal of uh, upside again here. Let's take a look at the Aussie. Also still signaling one hour bearishness. New Zealand as well. And probably I guess all of them are still showing. Let's take a look at the yen. Here too the dollar is still pushing up. And this was franc too. So all of them are having dollar a bit of a dollar strength correction. There definitely could be some bounce here. So the dollar is still finding its uh, correction, so nothing on that. Let's see how the euro odd is doing. Made some down move here a bit. See if we can find some support. Uh, that's about it, I guess, for for the moment. Um, just take a last look at the Aussie Swissy. Still moving down. If we were to break above this top, it's it's a risky counter trend trade, but it could work. But if it, it takes too long, if uh, if it takes too long and goes too much sideways like this, then uh, uh, you know I'll definitely exit. A dry trend line here, but dry trend line here, and actually close in reverse. Or I mean, close, and if the trend line breaks, reverse. 
if, uh, if it were to break more impulsively like this, that's a good sign. Kaylin is looking for shorting the year odd. Well, in a way, yes, it's not that strange because I was looking at shorting the year in New Zealand if it were to break below this, 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 this support level, right? So that makes sense. But I, th I think the year in New Zealand is set, like the pound New Zealand, in, more, in a more down, downside motion. So if I had to choose between shorting the euro odd or your New Zealand, then I would be looking to short the euro New Zealand because the euro odd is uh, not in the downtrend in my opinion. It's just in the sideways range at the moment. And if you then look at the one hour chart, it actually made a higher high here with a relatively big um, impulse and there's no major resistance here. So it could, it could continue up like this. It could also just continue to correct downwards, that's definitely true, and then find some support lower, potentially. But if I had to choose between Euro and Euro New Zealand, I would think the Euro New Zealand is more bearish, just like the Pound New Zealand, personally. That probably has to, so that has to do with the odd New Zealand, of course, let's take a look at that. That has everything to do with the odd New Zealand, moving down. But then again, you do have a point that the odd New Zealand is, uh, although it wasn't a major downtrend, right? Uh, the odd New Zealand is at a quadruple bottom plus at the bottom of the trend line, which makes it a bit iffy, the whole odd New Zealand question, because at the moment we're going sideways, basically, with a previous downtrend. Is this a, is this a bouncing spot? That means that your odd would be better for down, or is this just uh, going to move up a bit and then still fall and keep falling like this. Then the year New Zealand would be better. The odd New Zealand is, is in, a, in a tricky position, so that makes that choice very difficult. If I look at the Euro odd and Euro New Zealand, it, it looks a bit clearer to me. The odd New Zealand doesn't help me much. I mean, I know that we're in a big downtrend, but uh, we are at a potential bouncing spot. All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Bogdan. I have a fever, so I I might be um, less sharp than normal. You have to forgive me for that. Maybe I should have canceled today. It would have maybe better actually. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Bogdan. Um, it's my usual way of looking at the charts, but maybe I'm less uh, clear in, in my speaking. If if anyone had that, then uh, I hope, you know, Tuesday I should, I should be a lot better by then. Kalen has a target on the euro odd of 137.16. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a minus 272 target of this move down where I have the red lines and a 1 here. And then this could be a correction for more downside. It is possible, but the only thing is that a move like this, it's difficult to see it as a, as a correction on its own. It would need some follow through like this, most likely, and then still down. That's what I think at the moment, at least. Uh, sometimes it does happen that a move like this is the correction. Uh, but more, most of the time, actually, it's just part of the correction, even if it's downside. So something like this, I mean. Let me show you. Up, down, up would be the correction of this downside and for more downside. So your target is valid. 
The only thing is that um, the real safe, safest stop for your trade is right in here, actually, right above the top. Because anywhere in here, it could be a retracement for more downside. All right. So it looks like we're getting the push, as I said. Maybe we'll find support here. Um, and we are getting some push. That's good. Let's see if that continues today. Quick look at the Aussie Swiss. That's doing the opposite. It's not breaking that uh, high. So I would wait for that and monitor that trade very closely. If we get an impulse or if it's just a correction, I'll take it off. Otherwise, the uh, Euro odd, I would, where's the Euro odd? I would be careful of definitely this level, this 886 and 272 and 786. That's the resistance level because as Kalen is saying, basically, is that he has a target here, and it makes a lot of sense because this could be a down move correction, and you want more down move. Does everyone understand what I mean? And with this down move here, before we get the down move, we could make that three wave correction like this. So basically, this this trade I'm thinking of is is catching that third wave correction. Does everyone see what I mean? Let me draw it again. like this. Alrighty. That's great. But it's difficult because the, the bigger time frame is in a huge sideways move. So that always makes trading more difficult. Alrighty, I'm going to wrap it up, folks. I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> I won't be trading today, as you can imagine. But uh, I hope that, uh, that you catch some nice trades and uh, have a good weekend and good rest of the week. And looking forward to see you all on Tuesday. All right, then we'll continue with our live uh, daily room. All right, cheers, everyone. Thanks for being here. And thanks for your understanding. All right, cheers.